Hi all welcome to Box Office Studio, today I am going to recap one of the best revenge thriller movie. Okay then, let's get start. The movie starts by crafting its narrative amidst a forest enveloped in the enigma of the night. Two diligent policemen find themselves embroiled in a pivotal assignment. They are accompanying Krug, a notorious killer with charges of sexual assault, to a high-security jail. However, their expedition comes to a temporary halt at a railway crossing due to a passing train. Suddenly, an unexpected collision rocks their world. A truck crashes into their car. From the wreckage, two shadowy figures with concealed faces emerge. The tension heightens as these veiled individuals are unmasked to be Francis, Krug's younger sibling, and Sadie, Krug's heartless partner. Demonstrating her bone-chilling demeanor, Sadie cold-bloodedly shoots and murders one officer. Subsequently, they free Krug from confinement. As they regather, Krug inquires about his son, Justin. Francis assures him of Justin's well-being. Without delay, Krug then strangles the remaining officer, ensuring no witnesses are left behind. In stark contrast, we are introduced to Mari, a commendable young swimmer, and her affectionate family. Her mother, Emma, and her father, John, a proficient surgeon, opt for a tranquil getaway by a lake. Upon reaching their lakeside retreat, Emma and John settle at the main residence, while Mari, seeking solace, rests at the guest house. Mari's melancholic demeanor hints at a profound sorrow. She mourns her brother's passing and clings onto a cherished gold locket, a memento from him. The tale takes a twist when Mari approaches her parents with a request. She desires to visit a friend, John. After a moment of consideration, they pass her the car keys and some money. Mari ventures to a local store where her companion, Paige, is employed. By coincidence, Justin, Krug's son, who stands apart from his family sans criminal motives, is also present. He seeks to buy cigarettes but faces denial due to the lack of ID. Attempting to negotiate, Justin offers Paige some herbal substances in exchange for the cigarettes. Eventually, Paige complies. The trio proceeds to a nearby inn. While Mari patiently waits in the car, Justin and Paige share a moment in his room. Impatient, Mari decides to check on them and finds them relaxing and sharing a cigarette. Initially apprehensive, Mari eventually joins in, unaware of the impending events. Following their rendezvous at the inn, Emma contacts Mari, curious about her whereabouts. Mari, eager to appease her mother's worries, pledges to return home by morning, choosing to spend the night at Paige's. As the night unfolds, the girls and Justin engage in jovial banter and bond further. However, the atmosphere swiftly turns tense when Krug, Francis, and Sadie unexpectedly arrive, casting a shadow of danger. Both Mari and Paige sense the looming peril and commence seeking an escape route. Their fears are confirmed when Krug spots Mari's car parked outside, envisioning it as a potential means of escape. Given that Krug and Sadie are under the police's surveillance with their faces splashed all over the news, they chalk out a scheme to employ Mari's car to escape apprehension. In the grip of fear, Mari and Paige summon the courage to confront a menacing Francis. She wards him off with a powerful shove and barricades herself in the bathroom. Panic engulfs her as she frantically tries to reach out to the authorities, but Francis, unyielding, breaks down the door, rendering her attempts futile. He proceeds to wreck both Paige's and Mari's means of communication, further ensnaring them. Following Krug's commands, everyone is ushered into Mari's car, departing hastily from the in-premises. While traversing the roads, they catch sight of a police car, prompting a diversion into the woods for concealment. Amidst the bedlam, Mari seizes an opening, discreetly activating the car's cigarette lighter with her foot. 
Once it heats up, she presses it against Sadie's face, sparking a chaotic scuffle. The vehicle careens out of control, colliding with a cliff. The impact leaves Francis with a broken nose. In response to Mari's bold move, a furious Sadie lunges towards her, only to be thwarted by Paige's intervention, wielding a wooden branch as her defense. She strikes Sadie with it, facilitating her escape. A frenzied pursuit ensues, with Francis and Sadie on her trail. Resourceful and desperate, Paige discovers a hiding spot within a crevice, evading her pursuers as they pass by. Once out of sight, she alters her course, stumbling upon an industrial facility. Despite calling out for help, her plea is short-lived as Francis swiftly catches up. Despite her brave resistance, the combined force of Sadie and Francis proves overpowering, leading to Paige's capture and ensnarement in their web of menace. In a tense standoff, Krug endeavors to influence his son, Justin to embrace his malicious ways, urging him to engage in reprehensible acts. Justin, guided by his moral compass that contrasts his father's, defiantly resists even when Krug attempts physical coercion. Witnessing Krug's abominable conduct, Paige summons the courage to denounce him as pathetic, a retort that stirs Krug's fury. Enraged, he approaches the restrained Paige and inflicts a blow to her abdomen with Francis following suit by striking her back. These brutal actions result in grievous injuries, leaving Paige's life hanging in the balance. Despite her trepidation, Mari endeavors to repel Krug's advances. However, the odds are stacked against her as his kin, including his son, girlfriend, and brother watch on with some even abetting. Krug proceeds to subject Mari to a harrowing assault, but amid the ordeal, Mari astutely secures a rock without Krug's knowledge. Once the deed is done, she seizes the opportunity, hitting Krug on the head and making a desperate run towards the lake, seeking sanctuary in its waters. But Krug shows no signs of stopping. He relentlessly pursues her, firing shots in her direction. Sadly, one of the bullets finds its mark and Mari's apparently lifeless body rises to the surface. Believing they have silenced her forever, the group departs. Elsewhere, amidst the serenity of their vacation abode, Emma and John are enjoying their meal when an unexpected knock disrupts their tranquility. To their astonishment, they discover Krug, Francis, Sadie, and Justin at their doorstep. The group conceals their true identities, weaving a fabricated story about a car mishap. Ever compassionate, Emma and John offer aid. They explain that immediate transportation is unavailable as Mari has taken the vehicle, yet they open their doors to the seemingly ordinary guests. Shortly after, John attends to Francis' injured nose. However, an abrupt power outage complicates the situation. Resolute, John steps outside to restart the generator while Emma engages Krug in conversation, attempting to glean more information about their unforeseen visitors. With power restored, John resumes his medical aid, stitching up Francis' wound. Meanwhile, displaying her nurturing side, Emma tends to Justin, consoling him with a comforting cup of hot chocolate. The persistent rain, coupled with the disabled phone lines, prompts John and Emma to offer shelter to their unexpected visitors for the night. Gratefully, the group accepts retreating to the guest house. Unbeknownst to Emma and John, they are unknowingly providing refuge to the same individuals who inflicted harm upon their daughter. Unbeknownst to her, a resilient Mari, despite her grave injuries, struggles to find her way back home. Amidst the discussions, Justin feels the urge to use the restroom. He heads to the kitchen, placing his cup on the counter before spotting a familiar face, a photograph of Mari affixed to the refrigerator, a stark realization dawning upon him that they are in Mari's residence. 
Overcome with guilt and realization of his involvement, Justin hurriedly makes his way to the bathroom. Before leaving the kitchen, he places the gold pendant beside his cup, a cruel reminder taken by Krug from Mari. After some time, Emma guides their unexpected guests to the guest house. Frances, misreading Emma's kindness, begins to contemplate that she might be interested in him. Once the guests settle, Emma returns to the main house, her instincts alerting her to something amiss about their visitors. Sharing her concerns, she confides in her spouse, John. Their deliberations lead them to a decision it's prudent to secure the house for the night. Unexpectedly, a soft but peculiar knock interrupts their exchange. John's curiosity compels him to investigate the source of the knock. To his astonishment, he discovers his wounded daughter, Mari, in critical condition having mustered the strength to reach the porch of the house. John's paternal instincts kick in. He softly brings her inside, discovering the bullet wound. Thinking swiftly, he gives first aid, doing all within his control to stabilize her. Realizing the gravity of Mari's situation, John comprehends the necessity to cauterize the wound. As they search for supplies, Emma rummages through the kitchen. Her gaze falls upon the locket beside Justin's cup. Joining the dots, she comprehends the unsettling reality. Their guests are intricately linked to Mari's assault. Heart racing, she promptly informs John about the locket, solidifying their fears that the visiting family indeed harmed their beloved daughter. Mari's state is critical and they urgently need to transport her to a hospital. But with their car inaccessible, the only viable escape is by boat crossing the lake. However, there's a hitch. The boat keys are absent. Resolute, John heads to the boat, hoping to locate the keys there. Meanwhile, in the guest house, Justin spots a golden chance. With Krug deeply asleep, Justin quietly takes the gun from the bedside table. Unaware of the situation, Francis, presuming wrongly that Emma has taken a shine to him, heads to the main house. Emma, fully conscious of Mari's precarious condition in the living room, strives to shield her from Francis' sight. She astutely diverts his attention, pretending flirtation and mentioning her husband's feigned drunkenness upstairs. To divert Francis, Emma directs their conversation towards weightier topics, even offering him a glass of wine. However, she remains wary of the potential threat posed by the family picture on the fridge. Swiftly, she conceals the photo while retrieving a wine bottle. Despite John's exhaustive search, the boat keys remain elusive. Recognizing the imminent peril, he opts to search for tools that could serve as weapons against the looming dangers. Nonetheless, despite Emma's desperate efforts to hide her daughter, Francis soon stumbles upon Mari's injured form on the living room table. Acting swiftly, Emma smashes a wine bottle on his head. To her dismay, it barely phases him. Pulling out a knife in a last-ditch defense effort, Francis shows no mercy. Just in the nick of time, John bursts onto the scene. Witnessing his spouse's predicament, he brutally shatters Francis' nose once more. In a gritty confrontation, John attempts to submerge Francis in the kitchen sink. However, when Francis manages to yank the plug, presuming he has the upper hand, John activates the garbage disposal. Francis' hand gets caught, enduring brutal harm. With fierce resolve, John inflicts the final blow, utilizing the sharp end of a weighty hammer. Now that one thread is neutralized, the couple's attention shifts to the other abode where the remaining foes dwell. Armed with a freshly procured knife and a poker, they stealthily enter Krug's chamber. To their amazement, they discover Justin clutching his father's firearm. Without delay, Justin surrenders the gun to John, silently sanctioning him to exact retribution on Krug. However, the element of surprise is short-lived. 
John's handling of the gun rouses Sadie, whom John promptly shoots. Krug, swift on his feet, narrowly dodges the bullet, leaping through a window and sprinting for the main house. The pursuit commences. Amidst the turmoil, Sadie seeks refuge by securing herself in the bathroom. Nevertheless, John's determination shines through as he forcefully kicks down the door. Ensnared in the heat of the moment, Sadie fiercely strives to ward off the assaults from both John and Justin. Yet, just when victory seems within her grasp, Emma intervenes with a decisive blow to Sadie's face, bringing the skirmish to a close. Meanwhile, as Krug roves about the main dwelling, he chances upon Mari's garments. The grim reality hits him, he's in the domicile of his victim. His shock deepens upon discovering his brother's and out form in the kitchen. With tensions escalating, Justin aids Emma in the quest for the boat keys. Eager to evade the night's horrors, Krug, always the predator, senses a disturbance and investigates a bedroom, stumbling upon the family's escape strategies laid bare. As John courageously ventures into the same room, he observes the open window and erroneously assumes Krug has absconded. To his horror, Krug is closer than he assumes. The ensuing clash is savage, with Krug gaining the upper hand. Relishing his perceived advantage, Krug taunts John regarding the acts committed against Mari. However, even in his weakened state, John spots the boat keys. As Krug readies himself for the coup de grace, he's caught unawares. Justin, displaying unwavering courage, aims a gun at the back of his father's head. Krug, however, derides his son's act of valor, particularly when Justin's shot misfires due to an empty chamber. Undaunted, Krug retaliates by subduing Justin and delivering a vicious blow with a fire poker. Nevertheless, the tide turns when Emma storms in armed with a fire extinguisher, providing the couple with an opening to overpower the monstrous Krug. At daybreak, the bruised family, accompanied by Justin, set sail across the lake in search of much-needed medical assistance. However, the saga doesn't culminate there. Subsequently, John confronts Krug one final time. Rousing from his unconsciousness, Krug finds himself immobilized, incapacitated by the deep lacerations John inflicted. Panicked, Krug demands an explanation. In a climactic act of retribution, John places Krug's head inside a microwave, initiating the process. The narrative culminates on a gruesome note as John ensures that those who harmed his family face the ultimate reckoning. The chilling tale reaches its apex as John meets out the final chilling vengeance upon Krug. If you've enjoyed the movie and want to stay updated on more captivating recaps, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and thank you for being a part of our movie recap community.